I got the grading bucket on the excavator today. Let's switch over this diverter valve so we can empower. Which way does it go? It goes up. I couldn't remember. So that diverter valve right there changes the hydraulic flow from going to the thumb to whatever you have on the end of the excavator. In our case today, a grading bucket. So for those of you that are not aware of this, I think it's pretty interesting. You have your hydraulic flow coming from the excavator down here on the boom arm and it's diverted right here. We're going to change it like we did the other side. If I can turn it the right way to send the flow down to the grading bucket and that takes it away from the thumb right there. So like I was saying, the flow comes down this line into this diverter valve and you switch it. You know, if we're running the thumb, it goes this way. If we're running some type of attachment, it goes downward. And that way you can run a flail mower, a rock crusher, and there's all kinds of different attachments you can put on an excavator that needs hydraulics. And this one right here is a case drain. So if we get a flail mower one day for this excavator, I can hook a case drain to this nozzle or this connector right here. That sounds a whole lot better. Look over me guys, I'm a rookie on excavators. That way the hydraulic fluid has somewhere to dump at back into the tank through that right there. That's a good feature right there to get on your machine. And if you're out there looking for an excavator, guys, make sure you get a diverter valve. That way you can run your thumb and also an attachment on the bottom. And this right here makes it easy to switch back and forth. And this is actually gonna be the first time I've used this bucket. It's three feet long. It's got a hydraulic cylinder right there on the top that enables you to tilt it in different directions. Should be a really good bucket right there, guys. I'm really looking forward to putting this one to use. And if you have an excavator and you want one of these, this is Kado's, give them a call and they'll sell you one. I'm sure it's just as good as my machine. Now, let me show you guys what we're gonna be working on here for probably the next half hour or so, maybe longer. So what we're looking at is the road or the driveway, I guess you would call it, that comes into my house. That's my house right there. And check out the pear trees. They are starting to bloom right there. They look pretty good this time of year. So anyways, this is the road and we have all kinds of uh, Amazon trucks coming in here, UPS, FedEx, you name it. And we get it pretty much every day, it seems like sometimes. And this road has a little bit of a slope to it and these gravels get pushed down. And used to, I would come here at the bottom with one of the tractors and push the gravel up. I think that grading bucket is gonna do a better job and make this a whole lot easier to pull the gravel back up here to the road, especially right here where it really got pushed off on the side. I need to bring every bit of that up to the driveway. And sorry about my manners, friends. Welcome back to the sawmill. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. We got really good weather in Tennessee this week. Today, it's about 65 degrees. We're gonna work on this. We're gonna do a little bit of work on the skid steer. I need to change one of the filters on it. And then we're gonna head up there to the sawmill and work on some more of that pine. You guys hang in there. I'll have this works real fast. See if I can remember, I've only ran this thing once whenever the uh, machine was delivered a few weeks ago. There we go, check that out. So it goes in both directions right there. You talk about something that's gonna be handy to have around, my goodness. Let's go pull some gravel up. 
That should be an easy job for this bucket. Now whenever I get done, I will go over every bit of this with the land plane on the big tractor. Working good so far. Tell you what, this is a lot easier than using a tractor going back and forth, and a whole lot better. And this tilt bucket, I think, is the key to success on this job right here. This thing is nice to use. I tell you what, you can get your blade tilted at the perfect angle. That way, you can drag back the gravel and not bring the topsoil with it. Well, you grab a little bit of topsoil, but not a whole lot. Tell you what, the grass is getting green out here. We'll be mowing, I bet, within two more weeks, maybe sooner. Getting here to warm up the 754. And I'll show you guys what we're going to do next. All right, friends, now we're going to use the TYM 754 tractor with the seven foot land plane. And let me show you what we're going to do. So as you guys can see, the excavator done a great job pulling that rock up here to the top. 
I've done that in the past with tractors and it took all day. And I timed myself, it took me 24 minutes. And if I didn't have the video cameras going, it would have probably took me 10 minutes. Hello, John Henry. Where's my good boy John there with us today? John, you're dirty. What you been into? My goodness. Go take a bath. So now we're gonna come down through here at the land plane and see if we can evenly spread this gravel over here on this side. Some of it will get pushed back down here and that's okay because 90 some percent of it, or maybe even higher than that, I don't know, maybe 95% of it will be pushed over where it needs to go. This is a never ending battle that I usually have to do at least twice a year. Man, it's nice out here today. We're supposed to have good weather every day this week and no rain till Friday. I'll take it. Friends, after a couple passes with the land plane, I think we're done down here. It looks pretty good. I got a little bit of rock over here on the side. I'm okay with that, but I was able to drag most of it up here where it needs to go. And I was just doing some thinking. I may come in here with some dirt all the way down right here and try to bring this up level with the driveway. That might keep that gravel from getting pushed over there, maybe. Might do it in a future video. What do you guys think? You think that'll work? I think it will. That's not much of a slope right there, but it's enough for the gravels to get shoved down in there. I think some dirt would improve how that works. Let me know in the comments below. For you guys out there that run excavators, I'd be curious to see how I could permanently fix this problem. I have to do this about twice a year but I wish I never had to do it again. We got the ladies out here with us today, enjoying the sunshine. How are we doing today, girls? My goodness, look how green that grass is. I'm gonna be mowing probably sooner than later. We've also got the big guy here today. Hello, cabbage. How's it going, buddy? You doing okay? Maybe later? Talk to us later, maybe? Goodness sakes alive. Look at the size of that mouth. He's a good boy, but boy, he's lazy. I got the hatefulest cat on YouTube and the laziest cat on YouTube. So earlier in the video, I talked about coming up here to the shop and putting a new filter on the track loader. I think I'll wait and do that in the morning because I'm getting low on coffee. I've not had dinner yet and we're running out of daylight.
right, friends, I'm coming. I had to pour me a cup of coffee. Getting low on coffee around here. So this is a white pine. It came from a tree service. I didn't pay for this log and it's a mess, guys. You all can see this large knot right here on the top. I should have done a better job down in the log yard before I brought this one up here and got rid of that, but that's okay. We'll get rid of that with the first cut, but that's a large knot right there. 10 inches on the width on that knot. Our opening face will expose this knot and it's not good, guys, it's not good. This is an eight footer, I don't know if I said that or not. The diameter down here, away from you guys, is 16 inches. And on the operator's side, it's 12 inches. And this log is a mess, friends. If this log went to a high-end sawmill or a, an industrial sawmill, you know, that does thousands of board feet every day, they would put this in the pulp wood pile and they wouldn't buy it more than likely except they may pay for the tonnage for pulp wood. That would be about it. They would not buy this for a saw log. It's terrible. There's large knot clusters every two inches, not two inches, every 24 inches, which is about the norm here in Northeast Tennessee, which tells me this probably came from somebody's front or backyard in a residential setting. Here's what we're doing with this log. We're gonna turn it into dunnage. And what dunnage is for you guys that are not familiar with it, that's usually four by fours or six by sixes or sometimes two by fours, but I don't like doing two by fours on dunnage because there's a lot of large knots and those knots will make weak points. So four by fours is usually the best thing or six by six. And that's what we're gonna make out of this today is some dunnage. That way we get something out of it so we could use this for stacking or for cribbing or outriggers or you know whatever you wanna use it for. And there's a lot of sawmills that sell dunnage I don't know what they get for it. I couldn't imagine paying more than 50 cents a board foot for dunnage, maybe even less than that, but 50 cents will be the lowest I would ever charge for it. Any lower than that, you're not gonna make any money at all, but there's a lot of guys that do sell it and they sell a lot of it because people need dunnage for uh, stacking mobile homes, for yard barns, there's all kinds of uses for it. Need to check the fuel and the blade tension I think we're okay right there. I may go up just a little. On the sawmill, we got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want to try these blades out, call Joe Main. Cell phone number is in the video description. Let's check on our diesel. I think I got about a half a tank left from the other day. Speaking of diesel, my reserves are getting low. I need to go buy me about 200 gallons. I'm not looking forward to that. We're actually below half a tank. Might as well top it off. Somebody asked me in a video the other day if I enjoy sawing live edge slabs. And I do not enjoy sawing live edge slabs. But to quote my buddy Robert Milton down at Hobby Hardwoods, Alabama, I don't like sawing live edge slabs, but I like selling them. Sure does bring in some good money. But sawing them is not fun, and kiln drying them is not fun either. Selling them is the good part. It seems like the market for live edge slabs is not going away. I talked to a lot of people in the lumber industry, high end woodworkers, a lot of other sawmills, and over the years they kept on saying, you know, I'm ready for these live edge slabs to end in popularity and something new come along. It wouldn't bother me either, but it's yet to happen. I've been doing live edge slabs continuously. I've been sawing live edge slabs on a pretty regular basis and selling every one of them. I've never got stuck with one since I started saw milling in 2011. October of 2011 is when I bought my first wood miser. So that would have been almost 13 years ago. What is that over on the hill? It's a Kubota excavator. What the, what, what in the world is that guy doing? He's on the side of a hill over there at that thing. Better him than me, shoo. That's dangerous right there. So anyways, live edge slabs, they're not going away. But it would be interesting to know 
in your market if you're seeing a decrease in live edge slab sales. So let us know in the comments if any of you guys are seeing a decrease in that and what is new coming down the line that you're seeing an increase in. Around here, live edge slabs are still the king, but dimensional lumber, as far as like four quarter wide oak and walnut for cabinet makers, it's making a comeback it seems like. I'm getting a lot of phone calls for that here in the past few months, more than usual. There's also been a lot of people calling me looking for mantles. I don't fool with a lot of mantles. They take too long to dry, in my opinion. The best way to have a mantle, I think, is to get some eight quarter boards that are kiln dried and laminate them together. That's how I used to build mantles when I sold them a few years ago. They turned out real good. I never had trouble selling those either. And another question I got the other day that I forgot to answer was what's your favorite thing to saw and that is pretty much gonna be black walnut if I can do four quarter boards. If it slabs, I don't enjoy it, but I still do it for reasons we just discussed. And the uh, right behind that, as far as the favorite thing to saw would be quarter sawing white oak. Love to quarter saw white oak and red oak would be right behind that. All right, friends, let's warm up the Yanmar and get to it. This should be a decent log for dunnage, but that's about it. friends real fast if you're wondering why I'm not dragging those boards back to the table now you know my off bear is lacking I got a good stat back here I need to do something with and who is my off bear it's me I don't have nobody else I need to do something with all these two by sixes though 
They need to be stacked up for air drying and then hopefully here in about two weeks go into the kiln. And also somebody asked for an update on the dust collector, how it's going. And it's going pretty good actually. I cleaned the floor this morning and that right there is all the dust that's left after sawing up that log. So that's not too bad. I would guess I'm probably capturing 90% of the sawdust in the dust collector. The rest of it is going on the floor and also falling underneath the sawmill right there. Now that happens regardless, you can't control that. And there's also some on the rails, but that's not too bad. My two horsepower Harbor Freight dust collector is actually keeping up with the 70. That was a good idea. Before it's over with, I'll probably have maybe a five horsepower unit whenever I burn this one up, which probably won't be long. If I get two years out of this, that'd be pretty good. All right, so on the sawmill now, we got another white pine. I think that's about a nine footer. It's a pretty small one. Looks well, terrible on the outside. It's been on the ground for a decent amount of time. But I think if I'm lucky, I'll get maybe three or four two by sixes out of that. There is some taper to it though. I had to use my tow board right there to bring you up the far end. But other than that, and the obvious little uh, knot clusters right there that you guys see right there and right there, should be a decent log if it's solid in the middle. We'll find out here in just a minute. Friends, let me show you guys something. And this will help you guys out if you're doing a lot of dimensional lumber for people. I'm sawing two by sixes today. 
if you take your time and on your third cut, use this square to make sure that you're square to the sawmill, you would get nice square. Well, my goodness, stay up there, why don't you? You would get nice square lumber off the mill. Check it out. There's no light underneath that. Everything is nice and square. It just takes a few seconds to grab a square and I'm gonna stop saying square here in just a second and make sure that you are square to the bed. But I tell you what guys, it's worth it because when you come down here with your square and you put it up to your beam or whatever you're sawing, your cant rather, and you don't see any daylight anywhere coming out from underneath it, that's always a good feeling right there. It's worth the time to do it. And something else you wanna do is make sure you got nothing on your bed rails. I'm sure you guys saw me use the tow boards to raise that can up and take the leaf blower and clean all the sawdust out underneath the bed rails cause there will be some bark that falls underneath there and some sawdust and that will throw off your cant and cause you not to have a nice square cant. I'm not saying square no more for the rest of this video. Mm -hmm.